So do you want to just give us like the tweet size version of kind of like your story and how you ended up where you are today? Yeah, absolutely. So very quickly, um, I have always felt like helping people is my passion and I wanted to figure out how exactly I could do that. Um, so I graduated a year early from Wisconsin and instead of taking the traditional four-year college route, I was like, you know what, I'm gonna become a real estate agent. That is my calling. I love people, I like sales. I'm, gonna, I'm so doing it. So I ended up getting into real estate, got my real estate license and it was so not me. It was so like totally not what I expected. I, I wanted to be like million dollar listing, you know, with Steve Gold and it just was um, <laughs> just not what I expected. And so I started um, Instagramming about it under my desk and that ended up action. So that actually ended up sparking my love of branding and communicating with people over social and I started a digital marketing agency a year later. One of your things that you talk a lot about on social media is productivity hacks, getting stuff done, like motivating yourself. Can you run us through like what are your top three tips for someone who's like, oh, I wish I was productive. Like I wish I had all the skills. Like what are your top three things that someone can kind of implement like today to start to shift the way that they kind of run their life? Okay, so number one is my um, my post-it note hack, which is a post-it note calendar I set up every single month. And actually, I have an IGTV all about it. So if you need to know more about it, it's incredible. You could head to my IGTV at Liv Schreiber. Um, the two other things are definitely working out. I think you need to get your endorphins in um, or flowing. And number three is I abide by the power of music. I think that it has such an effect and, and can really change a mood. Um, so I also have a ton of different happy playlists and podcasts um, that I am always constantly filling my brain with because I really feel that you have to treat yourself like you're a kindergartner and you always have to be responsible for what you're feeding, not only yourself, but your mind. So can you talk a little bit about that? What do you mean you have to treat yourself like a kindergarten? I think that's a really cool concept. Yeah, so, you know, when we're little, our moms or our dads or the people taking care of us, they're constantly monitor, monitor, monitoring us to see, you know, what we're taking in and they're protecting us. Don't watch anything PG-13 and don't do this. And once you get to be a certain age, I think you have to take that on for yourself. So it's about reclaiming responsibility over what you allow inside of you. And that may be everything from surrounding yourself with positive people, cutting off the toxic ends. Um, I always say cut off your dead ends and by dead ends, I don't just mean your hair. So <laughs> I think it's, it's a, a combination of just filling your mind with, with good things. And so how did you come to realize to, to, to realize that you needed to cut off the dead ends, that you needed to surround yourself with great music and positive people? Like what was the moment in your life that kind of made you realize that? Um, I don't think there was one specific moment. I think it just has been a culmination of my whole life and just knowing that I deserve to be surrounded by people who lift me up and that like time is of the essence. Time is everything. Time is our most valuable, valuable thing we have here, which we all know. And why spend precious time on anything that's not going to lift you up? Yeah, that's so true. And I'm, for those of you who follow Liv Euler, it's actually she's at Liv Schreiber, by the way, on Instagram. You should definitely check her out. For those of you who follow you, they know that like your positive energy is very infectious. Um, how do you kind of keep that energy going? Do you ever get tired? Or like, what is your advice for other people who are like, sure, I get motivated in the morning to be positive, but then as the day goes on, I kind of wane. What's your advice to kind of keep that up? I think we're all human and the people following me know that I definitely, you know, am not perfect at all in any way, shape or form. My mother, if she's watching, could definitely tell you that. Um, but I think it's about not, not being down on yourself and, and don't knock yourself down. I'm taking a Yale online course right now. It's free. It's on Coursera and it's, um, it's all about how, 
we as humans are used to comparison and how, you know, comparison is the thief of joy, but at the same time, we can't help it. So whenever you feel as though you're most of the time, the dismantling of joy comes from the fact that you're comparing yourself to someone else, whether you see it on TV or on social media, you just feel like you're not doing enough. So I think that what I learned in my happiness class actually last night at 3 a.m. because I can't ever sleep is that, you know, whenever you feel like you're comparing yourself to anyone else, you actually have to take a step back and run through your head that what you're doing is focalism and you're actually just focusing on one aspect of someone's life or of your life when in reality there are so many different entities that make up a person. Yeah, that's really interesting. I love that. One of the things that you do a lot of work in is with women who are at college or maybe women who are at sort of late levels of high school, college, and then kind of the early stages of their career. What are some of the trends that you hear from them um, that are some of the biggest challenges that they're facing? Because you do a lot of coaching um, and you have your own agency as well. What are sort of some of those things that keep coming up, keep coming up for young women? Because at Pep Talk Her, like our mission is all about closing the gender pay gap and giving people the right. confidence um, that they need to advocate and negotiate for themselves. So I'm really interested to hear from your community, like what are the challenges that you're observing and what are sort of some of the pieces of advice that you're giving on a regular basis? Oh, you're good. Um, you know, I think a lot of it is right now uncertainty and how to deal with it and internships not happening and jobs not happening. And it's a conversation that really everyone is going through, not just girls in college. Um, and to that, I always say, you can't just have a plan A and a plan B. There's always time to have a plan A, B, C, D, E, F, and for those people who are stuck or waiting on one thing I always say don't put all your eggs in one basket it's just like stocks or investing like if you're waiting on a certain brand to answer you why not send out 50 more personal detailed emails to people or pitch yourself you know I think nothing is promised and you just have to make sure that you're constantly working to ensure that you have moving parts and pieces and you're not just, it's like, this is the same reason why we have multiple friends. We don't just rely on one best friend for everything. No, you know, I have a best friend who is super deep, who I can talk to about theories of the universe. And then I have another best friend who I love to go out with. And I have another best friend. And it doesn't mean one girl is better than the other. It just means that like, I need all of these people to better myself. And that's the same for internships or, or feeling like you are missing out on something. Don't just rely on one thing. That's great advice. I love that. Um, that you can't get everything. You, you, you shouldn't expect to get all things from one person. And so it's mm -hmm. great to kind of have a variety of different people to help you. One of the things that you've set up during the pandemic is um, a, a program to support uh, young women who are looking for internships or who have had internships cancelled because of everything going on. What is it and how can people who are listening um, get involved if they have a company where they can offer a role or if they're looking for a role? Thank you for asking. That's a great question. Um, so I, this idea came to me randomly in the shower and I was like, oh, Liv, should I do it? I don't know. Um, but I ended up just going for it. And, you know, I think that there's something to say there about even people who you feel like are the most confident or, or you know, have it all together still feel like anyone else. Um, and I created this document because I realized that the two things that were we're missing in this world right now are acts of kindness, acts of kindness for service people and medics and also jobs and internships. So how can we combine the three to ensure that we're hitting all those birds with one stone? That's a violent saying, but um, <laughs> we're tapping the birds with one stone. So I figured, you know, why not come up with a list of hundreds of different internships that I can offer to other people in exchange for them doing a kind act or a kind deed and tagging me and tagging three friends who also need internships. So that way we can circulate not just internships and opportunities because there are so many out there, but also so that we can circulate hope and 
kindness and smiles. So um, the internship doc has been up for two weeks and it's been absolutely incredible. So anyone can find the post that says, thank you, we love you on my Instagram page to access the available opportunities and how to do it. That's so great. And I feel like at the moment, the world needs more and more acts of kindness more and more acts of kindness, I should say. One of my right. dear friends, Adriana Picker, she's a botanical illustrator and she uh, had her fifth book released, I think, just at the very start of all of this. And mm-hmm. she was kind of like, on one hand, she was a bit upset, but on the other hand, she was like, it's not about me. How can we serve right. others during this time? And so she and I actually did a thing as well where we had people message us if they knew a healthcare worker um, to just randomly surprise them with a book. Um, so I love... I lo- I've been loving watching all the things that the women in your community have been doing as well. Um, it's, it's nice to have that reminder that um, it's very easy to do one small act of kindness for someone yeah. else. Um, Liv, for people who want to keep in touch, for people who want to learn more, like what's the best way to kind of hear more about your agency and like how can we connect with you if we have internship opportunities? Well, you can definitely send me a DM. I am always, I like to say my phone is now a part of my body. So um, I always answer everyone and everything and I always will. Um, And if you want to list an internship opportunity, the same Mm -hmm. goes, you got to do a kind deed. Um, Mm -hmm. I, I, I like to say that like no one is excluded and no one is too good for doing kindness. So although it is incredible for anyone who does want to offer internships, I'm still holding you to the same, you know, same tier as everyone else. And everyone just has to do a kind deed and they can access pretty much everything and more positivity hacks, kindness, and just overall, um, authentic self on my Instagram. It's been so lovely to hear more about your productivity hacks and your positivity hacks. And everyone can check Liv out on at Liv Schreiber on Instagram. Um, she's awesome. So watch, watch this space as her star keeps rising. And um, it's been a delight to chat, Liv. Thank you so much. Thanks for joining us on the Power Pep Talk. And we'll chat soon. And I'm so grateful. Thank you so much for taking the time out of your day to talk. <laughs>